the graduated adjustment brush. That, that's this little symbol up here, and as Scott pointed out, as you hover over it, it gives you the shortcut. You can press the letter M any time to turn it on or off. Right now it's off, and now it's on. I'm, the, I've got my image information up there right now, the, and the letter I turns that off. So uh, once again, M is off, M is on. All right, um, with the graduated filter, um, a lot of times, I, I use the brush a lot when I want to go to specific areas, but the graduated filter allows me to apply across a region in a very uniform manner. Um, uh, an increase in exposure, in exposure or a decrease in exposure. Um, for example, in, in an image like this, um, the, I, I like to, and the contrast on this um, doesn't show it quite as much, but, but the image looks kind of busy because of the left and right hand sides. And, and so I like to try to use light to focus the, the viewer's interest on the image. So one thing I might do is, and I'm currently in the graduated exposure, as I come right over here, you can see where my mouse is, I'm just going to click on the edge and start dragging. And you can see it's creating some lines. It's showing me where that graduation is going to go. I kind of like the lines of the staircase, and so I'm I'm bending it inwards, and, and all I have to do is lift it up or down, and it, and it changes the angle. But I'm going to kind of follow that line and bring it. I'm going to overlap the bride just a little bit, and then come over here to this exposure and pull it down. Okay? And, and you can see, so what graduated means is on the right-hand edge of my graduation area, it's, it's doing the least amount. It's still applying it. But the closer I get to the left side of that, the more it is adjusting. Okay, um, that, that's one of them. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And so I'm just going to start over here and just pull it down in. I'm going to, again, lean it because of the staircase. I'm going to overlap the bride a little bit. Uh, maybe it's about there. And adjust the exposure down, something like that. Now, I, I kind of, let me go a little bit further. Um, I kind of like the idea of her standing in a spotlight. And, and she wasn't. I mean, there is light overhead. Um, but I can make it look as if she was standing in light. By one more time, I'm going to apply a graduated filter from above and increase the exposure here. OK. And so. There is, with, with three little things, and, and it only takes a couple of seconds in Lightroom to do this. It takes you know, quite a while longer in Photoshop to make the same changes. But um, basically, before and after, it's. So you have to hold the mouse down and move that, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm holding down the mouse. Okay, that's one. Now let me go to another picture. Um, let's see. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger by turning this side off. Remember, you can do that. Um, so you can see her a little bit more. I, I look at this image and I wonder, OK, what is it that bothers me about this picture? I, I like her pose. I like the light. I've got a, I've got a, a flash off to my right hand side that's lighting her up. Um, but for some reason, the light is going down to the left, down to this area more than I want. And, and so my eye is being attracted to this area. And I don't like that. So I, I'm going to hit the letter M. And I'm going to just start down here and bring up. And, and really, you, you can play around with it, you know, it, it deciding how much to highlight, um, how wide it needs to be, where to start at what angle. It, it's all artistic, it's up to you, and, and you, you just play with it to see what works. Um, I'm, I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. You, you can see that, like everything else in Lightroom, if I, if I don't like that, I can adjust it afterwards. Um, so I'm going to stick that one right there. Th that's gotten rid of a lot of what was in the corner. I've, 
this part still bothered me a little bit down here and so I'm just going to do the same thing um, just start down here at the bottom and and actually her dress is just a little bit too white I want a little bit more focus on her face um, and so I'm going to bring it up here that, that will darken the the ground below her and a little bit of the dress not, not a lot um, so two things and I'm done with that picture um, and and one more thing, I th this next technique I use it a lot for um, studio pictures. It, the, who shoots off camera flash? Studio lights or off camera flash? Okay, what's the advantage to off camera flash? It gets it off to the side and gives you a three dimensional perspective, right? What's the downside to that? Especially if you've got a large group. You've got your flash over here, and, and, and you've got 10 people, and the flash is over here, and the guy that's over here on the other side, he gets the least amount of light, right? So, so you've got a really hot light on the right-hand side and a really you know, dim light on the left-hand side. I, I use this trick a lot in, in studio pictures. If, if I can, I try to get it right in camera by positioning my lights where I can highlight you know, everybody evenly. But the bigger the group is, the harder it is to do that unless you've got multiple lights. Um, this particular image is it's not a great one for showing this, but it still illustrates the same idea. Where's my flash? Can you tell by looking at the picture? Is it on the left hand side? And how can you tell? By, by the shadow and look at the bottom left corner. The bottom left corner is way too bright. Okay? And, and so all the time, um, I, I will do that same thing. I'll, I'll say, okay. My, my flash may have been here, but nobody has to know that, okay? And I'll just come in here and darken that side down, okay? So I, I still get my three-dimensional effect because of the off-camera flash, but I don't have that blown out too close to the flash area that you get. Um, one more thing before, because that, that's mostly what I wanted to show you. I've only touched one, one aspect here, and that's the exposure side of this. All of your controls are active. You know, if you needed to increase the contrast or the saturation, or how about, and this one is, I, I don't see people using this one very often, but it can be really handy. Um, there's, there's a yellowness to, to this image. Let's say I wanted to balance that out with some blue, okay? You're right. Okay. You don't use that very often. All right, so, so I, I can adjust how much blue I'm adding in here. Um, or, or whatever color I want, okay? But it, it's, it's still using the graduated filter to uh, you know, apply that selectively to the image. Go ahead. Dave, can you point out the little uh, power switch in the right? Because it doesn't come in this view by default. Okay. Um, the, this thing, where my, my, right here. Okay. The, by default, this is the basic mode, and I, I usually forget that this is even here. I think we ran into it in the back here. But um, in basic mode, you can only change one thing at a time, and that, that's um, like I was doing was the exposure. You, you, you can pick one of these and adjust it. I, I almost always just, I click that and I just leave it there so that I can adjust any one of the sliders that I want off in, in any proportion. That's a good point. Other question? Go ahead. Um, is there a way to take that when you go to change the color? Is there a way to select the color that's in the, in the photo um, and adjust and slide that uh, color? I don't think so. I'm, I'm constantly trying to drag that pointer over to pick up my and, color. and pick up a color. That'd be really cool. And even cooler than that would be to pick up a a, um, a complementary color. You know, um, not that I know of. Sorry. Um, I think that's all I have. That's okay. Good. Yay.